Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Veltima Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Peter Johnson at realagriculture.com and we are going to talk corn maturities. So just, it's so interesting. The Ontario Corn Committee, Dr. Dave Hooker took 42 site years of data and said, okay, what difference does it make if I go full season maturity, I go maybe a little bit longer, I go shorter. From a yield perspective, from a moisture perspective, what does it do to my bottom line? Oh my gosh, 6.1 bushels per acre for every 100 crop heat units. Now, if you're not a crop heat unit person, you're listening to this from the United States or Michigan and you're a day person, that's three days. So I get six bushels to go three days longer in maturity. What about moisture? 1.2% wetter at harvest. Now that's Ontario data, but wow, six bushels at $8 a bushel after drying? Yeah, that's, that's like 50 bucks. And 1% wetter on 200 bushel corn? That's nowhere near 50 bucks. The economics on that says, go long, baby, go long. Well, you know, Dr. Dave tweeted that out. And what an interesting Twitter discussion. Now think about this. If I go 100 heat units longer, in the deep southwest of Ontario, down in Essex, Chatham, Kent, that area, my yield gain is quite a bit less. It's on the low end of that six bushels per acre. Why? Because they're already long season corn. They're already growing 3,300, 3,200, 3,400 heat unit corn hybrids. So an extra 100, it's not percentage wise nearly as much. I get up to Arthur and oh my gosh, we're growing 2,600 heat unit corn. If I can squeak out 100 more, that's probably more than six bushels. Maybe it's eight bushels. Like it's the economics drive you to do it. In the Twitter discussion, everybody says, oh yeah, Pete, that's great. Except when you're short season, you can't afford to go long because the risk is too high. If you don't make it, then you've got low test weight crop. You're fighting, the other, the other real, <laughs> I just love it, is that it was the mental health benefit of not having to fight mud, of not having to listen to Christmas music in the corn combine is worth you don't know how much, Johnson. So there's a whole bunch of things that despite the economics, despite the data that is clear, Go long, go long, go long. Nope. If you're in a short season area, you don't want to go longer than full season because you could get into years when you don't make maturity. I mean, gosh, there have been years. 2006, we thought there was no way the corn, there was no dent on the 1st of September. And many years in the short season areas, test weight, because it's a quality issue, you don't make test weight, all things are bad. So in the short season areas, people tend to actually go a little bit shorter just to make sure they get maturity. Plus they're in the snow belt and we gotta get that crop out of the field. So a really interesting discussion. At the end of the day, what's the right decision? Well, if you're a gambler, go along, baby. If you're in the short season area, yeah, you don't want to listen to Christmas music in the combine. You don't want to fight mud. You don't want to create compaction. Going long probably is not for you. But there are bushels to be had. Maybe if you've got a lot of acres, you put a little bit in that long category to say, Let, let's risk 10%, 20% of our acreage to get the bragging rights at the coffee shop, to get actually the bragging rights on Twitter now. Twitter is the new coffee shop but know the risks. Yes, there's more yield. Yes, there's more profit, but there are definite risks. And if it's gonna affect your mental health, don't go there. Peter Johnson at WheatPete, realagriculture.com. And in this case, whatever you do, grow great corn. <laughs>